So now we have the derivative. I'll ask the same question I did back there. What was the point of that? Yeah, so I'm going to put this into um, y minus y1 equals m outside x minus x1. Yes? Okay. Now, keep in mind, this is a gradient function, right? So this gives me the gradient anywhere for any x and any y. But I don't want any x or any y. I want that x and that y. Okay? So therefore, the equation of the tangent is... y minus y1 is literally y minus y1. Like, that's the coordinates, okay? But when I put in m, I don't write this. This is a function. m is a number, right? I want the gradient at the particular value for x equals x1 and y equals y1. Does that make sense? A lot of people just put this into m. That's not a number. It's a function, okay? So instead of that, I'm going to put minus b squared x1. It's an actual number. On a squared y1. It's a number, okay? And then I've got my x minus x1 in there, okay? And then I want to simplify this thing. Why don't you have a go? See what you end up with. And this time, I'm not going to ask you to put it in general form. I want you to think about what might be the neatest form, the most convenient one for the purposes I'm going to use. What did I do from first to second line? Yeah, I need to get rid of this fraction out of the way, right? So there you can see all of those terms have gotten a squared y1 hanging on. What did I do from line 2 to line 3? Just put um, the, the x, term, x and y terms on one side. Good, so I've got the, um, the x and the y there. And over here, this is just one big constant. It's a gross constant, but that's all it is, okay? Now at this point, it's not obvious what I should do with this, okay? So I'm going to give you a bit of a hint to try and make it a little more obvious. Okay? <laughs> On the right hand side, I'm going to factor out a number. But <laughs> and you've seen me do this before. I'm going to break the rules of factorizing. And um, like what you're supposed to do is find out a number that is in common between these. And then you divide that through. Right? There is no single number that is common to both of them. Do you see that? They're made up of completely different pieces. But that's OK. Because if I take out this. There's part in common with the first term and part in common with the second term. Do you agree with that? What's going to happen is I lose the b squared here, but because I'm dividing, I'm multiplying by a squared as well, I'm going to divide on the inside. So that would give me this. Yeah? And the same thing happens for the y1 squared term, but in reverse. So I'm going to get this guy. Okay? So far, so good? <coughs> okay. Now, hmm. When you do this, when you do this, you look at that thing on the right and you stare at it and you stare at it really hard and you should say, that looks familiar. In fact, I've written that almost identical thing on the board. What does that look like? What does this look most similar to? Does that not look like the equation or well, one side of the equation of an ellipse? Do you see it right here? Right? All I've done is I've changed x into x1 and y into y1. But x1, y1 is on the ellipse. It's a point that satisfies this equation. That's what it means to be on the ellipse, right? So therefore, I should be able to put x1 and y1 into here, and this will be a true statement. So therefore, on the right-hand side, what I really have is a squared times b squared times 1. Okay? Now, that's a very counterintuitive thing to see. Like, that's not obvious. Like, doing this is not obvious either. Okay? But now that you can see that, we can make this nice and neat. Would someone like to give me a suggestion of a nice step I could do that's going to make Titus in a nice neat boat? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I, I could divide by one if I really wanted to. Um, I wouldn't get very much out of it. Okay, now, do you see? This is a beautiful form. Look at that, right? In fact, do you remember, bless you, when we were doing the parametrics of the parabola, we got things like this, right? Where the equation of the tangent looked almost exactly the same as the equation of the parabola itself. Right? Do you recall that? Um, so what you've got here is almost identical to this. Right? Do you see how similar it is? I've just taken one of the x's and turned it into x1. Same for the y1. Now just to verify that we haven't just like done some algebraic screw up, okay? Remember I know that x1 and y1 were just my alternative labels for these guys. Remember that? Like they're, they're the same thing, okay? So let's just, just see what happens. What if 
a, sorry, x is equal to a cos theta, what would happen? And y equals b sine theta. Watch what happens as we substitute in for x1, x1, and y1. You see that? Over here, I'm going to get x times a cos theta on a squared. And then here, we're going to get y times b sine theta on b squared. It's still 1, right? Cancel, 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 cancel. Boy, that looks familiar, right? So just to verify, you can see that the Cartesian approach and the parametric approach do give us the same result. But I think this is harder and messier. Whereas, provided you're OK with this idea, this is much more direct and simpler. Okay, the algebra, at least, is much easier. Any questions on that? Yeah. So we, um, are we often required to prove this in OK, that is the right question to ask. And the answer is kind of. And I will show you what I mean. Let's do an example together. 